Good morning, everybody out there in gig land. <laughs> I'm just, I know this is going to seem like it's a live stream to you, but this is actually recording. I'm sorry. I know you're going to be like, what's up, Jeff? Trying to type in. No, I'm not here. I'm not. Today, I got my Uber Eats gear on, and there's a reason why. I'm going to show you what it says on the back. Hold up. Now, I've been selling this shirt on my website for at least two years. I would say two years. And the reason why I say that is critical because there's a YouTuber out there who heard me say, oh man, delivering these motherfucking hot dogs for a living, you know, this, you know how I talk shit. So he's going around saying that I, Jeff, think delivery drivers are below or not worth rideshare drivers or something like that weird, I don't know. Cause he doesn't think that I'm a delivery driver. He doesn't realize that I've got all delivery videos on my channel. I analyze delivery, I do delivery. I've done close to about a thousand deliveries. I've done them as, as lately, as recently as what, the other day, on Christmas day I did deliveries. And I got, there was 27, that was on my Christmas day video. And it was a $27 Chinese food delivery. Even before that was a Taco Bell delivery. I do delivery. Still to this day, I do delivery. I'm a, you know, delivery rideshare driver. I'm a weird hybrid. A lot of rideshare people, I ain't getting out of my car. Hell no, I ain't, I ain't getting out of my car. Hell no. Me, I'm like, shit, if you pay me enough, what, how much? $10 to deliver this soda. I'll bring this soda to you. Where's my 10 bucks? It was only around the corner. Cool. And so far, so let me open my door. So I got two drinks already in there. I'm gonna have to carry this one by hand. I just put it right here for now, so I go around to the other side. So I got those two up there. Then I got these two back here with that. All the food there, and I've made three trips into the store. This is gonna be a nightmare delivery. And that big ass order of all this food that I'm getting, look at where I gotta go through all of this. So. I'm helping this guy right now get all of his food and everything. But man, I got to go through. That's why I just parked the Beamer way down here. <laughs> yeah, this is nuts. Got me stepping in mud and shit. My shoes are all muddy. This is what I was going to drive through it, but I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I ain't getting my BMW dirty. So I left the Beamer sitting back here. <laughs> I'd rather just walk this shit up. Let's go. All right, my man. Take care, brother. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't about to drive through all of this. Not in that Beamer, hell no. My front spoiler would've got chewed up. My tires would be all muddy. Shit, not me. My shoes are already bad enough. And I can see like how muddy my shoes and shit are. Look at that. All that just from delivering food. Yeah, I'm about to wipe my shoes off though. I can't get in the car like that. Look at this shit. So I'm trying to wipe my shoes off. I got mud all over my damn kicks now. And my cars always stay clean. The car looks like that. Nice and clean. I'm not putting these muddy ass shoes in my car. I'm just going to have to take my shoes off and go drive somewhere and wipe them off. I'm not driving with these shoes. There's my muddy shoes. Yeah. I'll be driving like this. Forget that shit. I'm not getting these muddy ass shoes. These shoes all, you know mud all in my damn car from this shit not happening doubt it but like i said I, I wasn't about to drive through that shit hell no not in my clean ass car yeah uber eats don't pay me enough to be riding around with muddy ass shoes and driving my car through mud and shit because it's not what you do for a living but it's how you do it do you do it in a profitable sense or a non-profit sense me everything i do has to make sense it has to be profit now, a lot of these guys out there who actually do delivery look at me. Oh, he's not a delivery driver. He, he, hey, he talk about we do this. We deliver hot dogs for a living. He's talking all this shit about us. Bruh, I drive around all day with this Uber Eats shirt on with my name on it. So if I'm agreeing that I am a delivery driver that does deliveries for a living, how can I talk shit about delivery drivers? That's like me talking shit about myself. How stupid does that sound? Like, I'm all, yeah, these, these people driving these Jeeps are straight idiots. Meanwhile, I'm pulling up in a big-ass Jeep. Like, dude, that, like, didn't you just say people that drive Jeeps are an idiot? Like, I mean, it wouldn't make sense. So this guy's saying that, his, you know, his name's Torp. A lot of people know him. And his channel's a little different. Like, he, he does gigs, but he doesn't do gig content. I say he does shock content. He does drama content. It, you can look at my videos. I got deliveries on here. I'll show you how to do deliveries. I've got an analysis 
about two years ago. I put an analysis on here and it kind of went viral on Facebook because it breaks down Lyft, what I did on Lyft, what I did on Lux, what I did on UberX and what I did on Uber Eats. And I did the shit for like a week straight. Then I did the next one for a week doing something different and I would do it every week. I would do all the apps I could do every week. Whatever I would try to do during the day, if it was profitable, I would do it. If it was dropping off a fucking sausage, I would drop off the sausage. Fuck it. I mean, you're paying me $15 to drop off a sausage sandwich. Fuck it, I'll take it. And that's just how I am. I chase profits. I don't care if you're going to have me drop off food. I'll drop off food if it's more than because these shitty rides we getting. Because if you're trying to give me 50 cent a mile to drop a person off, but you paying me $11 a mile to drop off a sausage sandwich, I mean, an idiot's not, oh, I'm going to drop this person off. I ain't delivering no fucking sausage. I mean, you an idiot. Deliver the sausage. Get it out the way. And I'm that type of driver. But this guy is saying, oh, he's not that type. He doesn't. He's a ride share driver who thinks he's high and mighty against. In my opinion, he's trying to divide. He sees how my channel is growing. He's trying to divide delivery and ride share. Kind of like how the government tries to divide blacks and whites. Same shit. You try to create a, a hierarchy on who you think is more valuable than who. Ride share and delivery both make money. Delivery makes more per mile because delivery is a lot of short trips. And if you know how to do this shit right, it could be way more profitable. I have a video showing me making $2,200 in one week. Not even work. I work like probably 40 hours. $2,200 in one week doing delivery. Uber Eats, that's it. Uber Eats got so pissed off they kicked me off of Uber Eats. They had me doing Uber X after that. I couldn't even get on Uber Eats after that. They were mad as shit. Because I'm out here delivering hot dogs, fucking soggy tacos, and I'm making bank. And these motherfuckers are like, who is this dude? They have no idea who the fuck I am. I'm an accountant. I'm that smart. I know what I'm doing. So this guy, his channel is a drama channel. He doesn't analyze delivery. He doesn't talk about delivery. He doesn't show his delivery. He doesn't do ride-alongs. He doesn't do none of that shit. But he has the nerve to come on his channel and talk shit about me, about what I got on my channel, saying that I'm against delivery. I think it's because he sees how this channel is growing and he's seeing a lot of delivery people get on his channel because we speak about profits and business and value and we laugh and we have a good time and shit. And he says, this guy's growing too fast, too big. I'm going to try to chop his shit down. I'm going to make sure only ride your people go to his channel and delivery people come to my channel, which he don't really talk about shit. And I'm going to tell him, everybody, hey, 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 this guy hates delivery drivers. He thinks we're nobody. He thinks we just fucking deliver hot dogs. You do. Because I do. I know what we deliver. We deliver fucking sausage sandwiches, pancakes, hot dogs, hamburgers, french fries, Starbucks. That's the shit that we deliver. If you don't deliver that shit, you're probably missing some good money. But there's people out there who will pay $5 for two miles. It might take you like 10 minutes, if that, to deliver a couple of fucking hot dogs. I'm gonna, And they're already ready. You just walk in, hot dogs right on the counter. You get them, you go. $5, then you open the app. Hey, you, congrats, you got more than you up front. They, they gave you $10 instead. So now you got $10 for this some fucking hot dogs and you only went two miles. So if you want to look at the fact that it's a hot dog delivery and not the money and the miles and the minutes, then you ain't got your fucking head in the right place. I'll deliver whatever somebody wants. I will deliver fucking bobby pins. You know what bobby pins are? I'll deliver those motherfuckers. $20, man. Take these bobby pins to this motherfucking hair salon. They doing somebody's hair. They ran out of the bobby pins. 20 bucks. Guess what? You're going to get a pack of fucking bobby pins. Jeff, what do you do for a living? Today, I'm delivering bobby pins. That's what I do. I'm getting this fucking money. Now, not every delivery driver out there, a ride share driver, or even YouTuber understands that concept. A lot of them are still thinking... I got to stay busy. Got to spin my wheels in mud. Got to stick to the policy. I stick to policy in a lot of shit I do. I said a lot of shit I do. Keyword. I mean, the apps don't stick to policy. They steal our tips. They steal our fares. They fucking tank the fare when the surge is there. They tank the, sur the fare when we get a big tip or something like that. They don't stick to policy. They play us. We don't all stick to policy. Ain't nobody 100% sticking by policy. If you are sticking by policy 100% in 2024, you're not going to make it in this game. You're just not. Motherfuckers come up, hey man, you know, I, I know you said, you know, you can't take five, but I got five. Give you a hundred bucks. Hundred bucks, how far are we going? Five miles? Sit on his lap. Let's go. But if you're just doing base fare, yeah, when I'm not doing that for base fare. For base fare, nah, doubt it. I'm taking y'all fucking five miles, five dollars, five people stacked in my car. Nah, dude, we'll give you a hundred bucks. Sit on his lap. <laughs> it's like, fuck that. You got to know how to make money in this game. Sometimes you got to go outside of the boundaries. You got to go out of bounds and kick that motherfucker back in bounds to keep that ball in play. And sometimes you, I kick that shit back. The money is in play. The ball is in play. And so 
I want to wear this shirt today just to let people out there know because they're going to leave his channel because he put my name and everything. It's Torp's channel. He put my name and everything on his hand, tag me and shit and everything. People going to come here. I want them to see this video and go, wait a minute. Bro's got a delivery shirt on and he sells that same shirt on his website. He's been selling it for two years. It's a delivery shirt. He's been selling it for two years on his website. And my t-shirt link is in the comments below. This shirt's been on there for a couple of years. So if I don't support delivery drivers, I don't try to get everybody to get money, everybody to do business the smart way, and everybody to get profits. Why the fuck would I be wearing this shirt with my name on it? If I didn't think delivery drivers were worth shit, why would I have my name on here? I would put something like Tony. I'm like, motherfucker, I don't want you to think Jeff's delivering fucking hot dogs. Goddamn Tony's delivering it. They're like, hey, Tony. I'm like, hey. <laughs> motherfucker might keep saying Tony. I don't even answer because I forget I got Tony. Hey, Tony. 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 Hey, Tony. I'm like, oh, shit. Hey, hey, what's up? Bruh, are you fucking Tony? Do you know your name? Yeah, dog, I'm Tony. Yeah, I'm Tony, man. I deliver motherfucking hot dogs, man. I'm Tony. I'm Tony the hot dog delivery guy. What's up? Motherfucker, you ain't Tony. Let me see some ID. <laughs> Why do you got Tony on your shirt? Because I'm not proud of this, man. I'm really not proud of this. <laughs> yeah, right. Fuck that. I'm Jeff. Give me the bag. I'm out. <laughs> and like I said, a lot of people, they sit there and they want to say shit in the community. I think because they see the traction on this channel. And I tell everybody, watch every channel. I don't give a shit. Eight billion people on this planet. Watch whatever you want to watch. But don't sit up here and try to downplay and disconnect people from my content because you haven't been on my channel. You haven't seen videos on my channel. Tons of videos about delivery on my channel. With me even doing ride-alongs. Shit you don't even do on your channel. You don't do ride-alongs. You're a delivery person that don't do delivery ride-alongs. Why is that? Are you not proud of what you fucking do? Are you concealing what you do from people who stop by your channel? Let motherfuckers know. Hold the hot dog up to the screen. This is what I'm delivering today. Motherfucker, hold that shit up. Let a motherfucker know. Because I would do it. I deliver shit. I be having cookies in the car, motherfucking D Denny's. I have all kind of shit in my seat. And I show that shit like this is what I'm dropping off right here. Show it on my screen and everything. If I wasn't proud of it, I wouldn't do it. So that's your answer right there. Oh, he thinks delivery drivers ain't shit. You know, he doesn't. If I wasn't proud of it, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be wearing a shirt with the shit on it, walking around public. Hey, Jeff, my name's Tony. <laughs> Whatever, motherfucker, shit. Nah, but and then you got these other channels out there. Oh my God, I'm, I I understand the need. Like I said, I see podcasting channels, millions of views, millions of subs. Shit goes haywire all the time on podcasting channels. They're always doing interviews. Great shit. But you got these gig channels. If you watch my channel, I'm going to make you $1,000 a week, $2,000 a week, guaranteed. That sounds like a fucking Ponzi scheme shit. And I'm not saying that it's not, it can't happen. It could probably happen. But you're looking at a lot of channels that aren't showing the proper ways how to drive. A lot of them are showing like sketchy shit. They show the highlights. They don't show the low lights. The low lights of, you know, dead days, dead nights, having to switch up and go mornings instead of nights. I show everything. I tell you my date. I tell you my time. I've always told you my date and my time. I show you how much gas is in my fucking car. When I start, when I finish, how much I'm putting in at the fucking gas tank. Oh man, you probably spent about $80. Motherfucker, I got it on video. How much I spent was 47. Oh, my bad. Yeah, exactly. I take the guesswork out of the shit. I take all the guesswork out. I'll never tell you, if you watch my channel, you're guaranteed to make a thousand a week. You'll never hear me say no shit like that. Why would I say that? I don't even know your market. I don't know how you drive, what time of day you drive. I don't know if you got, you know, a few hours a week, all week. I don't know what's going on. But for a channel to just ambiguously say, oh, if you watch us, you're guaranteed to make a thousand a week. Or you can have my Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, take the dog, because that motherfucker, you ain't making that thousand. Just take his fucking dog. Get it out of the way. But I don't tell people that shit because I don't know your market. I don't know if there's bonuses, if, how, how fucked up, how saturated your market is. It is a claim that me, as a podcaster, as a YouTuber, as a geek, whatever the fuck you feel like calling me today, a mechanic, whatever you want to call me, an accountant, what you want to call me today. But I cannot tell you with a clear conscience that if you watch this channel, you're going to make $1,000 every week. To me, that's called bullshitting you. It's bullshitting you to get you to sub this channel, to get you to watch these videos, to be like, man, I can't make a thousand. Let me watch another one. Man, I can't make a thousand. Let me watch another one. Man, no. 
Maybe the problem is not you trying to make a thousand dollars, but let's maximize your profits, possibly maximize the profits that you can make and also get a W-2. Get something a little more reliable than this bullshit. And we know this is not reliable. How are we getting our tips stolen, our fares stolen if this is so reliable? How are we getting throttled? How are we not getting rides? That's why I posted the videos sitting in the bonus zone for an hour. An hour I sat in the bonus zone, $4.50 per ride. How many rides did I get? Zero. They offered me the first one, but they said, I hurry up and click that mob because seven something dollars real quick. I clicked it and it went away. Like I said, all that ride's not matched. But then as soon as I got out of the bonus zone, they sent me a ride right behind it, a dollar a mile ride. No bonus attached. As soon as I got, so I show people that shit on my channel in real time. This is a real channel. This is not a rhetorical channel. I don't do a lot of rhetoric. I do jokes and shit like that, but I don't do rhetoric. I'm not gonna sit here and fuck with you and have you out there driving thinking that you're doing something wrong. You could be doing everything right, by the books, textbooks, smart driving, profit chasing, and still end up empty handed. Two fucking goose eggs on the screen. Lift an Uber. Sometimes the apps are fucking with you. Remember New Year's Eve? Do you think everybody just happened to fuck up? Do you think everybody just fucked up the download ability on their phones? Do you think all the surge and all the tips just disappear because nobody's getting tipped? Do you really think that? No. Sometimes it's shit beyond your control. It's shit the apps are doing to fuck with you. So I tell people, I will never make a claim to make you rich or make you wealthy or make you well off or make you any fucking thing just by watching my content. If you come to my channel and shit's you having a problem, start discussing that problem in the comments. Cause you may find a driver in your region that says, bro, I got the same problem. You know what it is? The motherfucking traffic lights are out of sync. That's why you're not making no money on. And I'll tell you, I hate traffic lights. Them motherfuckers, I never get a surge. Behind some of these traffic lights, I never make it to a surge. You got to have them motherfuckers in sync. You got goddamn $13 sitting two blocks away, and you can't even make two blocks in 10 minutes. The lights is out of sync. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker, ooh, green. You try to floor it, red. Shit, I just had the last light. I Sometimes that shit happens in regions. And y'all heard me say in videos, I stay out of this part of town because there's too many traffic lights. This is a part of our job. Our office is lights, curbs, corners, driveways, parking lots. That's our fucking office right there. So if you got stoplights all the fucking time and you keep working a region with a ton of stoplights, I never catch surge, man. Oh, fooey. Who the fuck says fooey? First off, you shouldn't be a driver if you're saying fooey. Oh, fooey. Man, you about like, man, goddamn. Now you're going to start catching surge because you're getting mad. You're getting worked up. God damn. That's how you're going to get surge. Say that shit. When you miss a surge, trust me. Say, God damn. Very next fucking surge, you're going to get that motherfucker. Come back to this video and tell me if that works. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Somebody going to be like, Jeff, I sat at the light and I said, God damn. Forgot I was taking my kid to preschool. She was like, Dad, that's a bad word. <laughs> It's like, I totally forgot my kid was in the car with me the whole time. Man, Jeff, you got me fucking cussing in front of my kids now. No, but for real though, you know, I'm the type of driver that's going to show you everything that's out there. Everything in my region, screen record, and I'm so glad more channels are starting to screen record. That's what makes a difference. That's what makes the difference in what we do. We're showing riders out there. We're showing other drivers, people who are potential drivers, like veteran drivers that thought they was doing okay, but now they're saying, oh shit. I can kind of use Paw Patrol. I can move here. I can do this. I can sit in this parking lot. I, can, I mean, you're teaching everybody the tactics because as the apps change, the algorithm changes, we have to change. Anybody still driving like it's 2020, you fucking up right now. This is not 2020. This is 2024. You got to kind of change this shit up a little bit because these apps have changed. They're screwing with us and fucking with us. So sometimes you got to use Cash App. You got to use Zelle. You got to use Venmo to get your tip. You can't rely on these motherfuckers to give it to you. Man, I just tipped you 20 bucks. I don't see it. Yeah, I just tip you 20 bucks. All of a sudden, $5 pop on that ride. Like, hold up, this motherfucker. You hit, you hit lift up, lift is like, well, you got a screenshot of that? Also, you guys know it's fucked up or else why would you ask me for a screenshot? Why would you be asking me for proof that I'm right if you know your system can be altered and fucked up? You would say, if you was 100% sure that tips could not be manipulated, the first thing you would say is, there's no way our tipping system can be manipulated. You're lying, Jeff. If the guy tipped you $5, you got $5. If he tipped you 20, you got 20. We can't manipulate this shit. We can't change these tips, Jeff. Once a customer leaves a tip, the tip is what it is. They don't say that. These lying motherfuckers be like, oh, you got a screenshot? Can you, can you show us what you mean? 
No, oh, 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 you can't show us. You can't show us. You ain't getting that money, motherfucker. You can't show us. I'm fucking with you. I actually got the screenshot. I want to see what you was going to say. Send the screenshot. Oh, yeah, let me edit the system. I see where it is now. I see what happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see what happened, you lying motherfucker. And that's how you got to treat these apps. It's sad that we got to be like that. Sad. But we do because we got to get our money. That's why I tell motherfuckers, Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, Chime, you know, PayPal, Apple Pay, whatever you can do. Get this motherfucker to not put no money on these apps because they're going to fuck you up. That's what I know for sure. Whether or not you can make a thousand a week, I don't fucking know. You probably can in your market. I don't know your market like that. So me sitting in Phoenix on this fucking microphone, I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. If you watch my channel, I guarantee I can make you a thousand a week. But wait, there's more. I'm going to sell you a fucking mop. <laughs> it's like, okay, these motherfuckers sound like infomercials and shit. If you can make a thousand dollars, watch my channel. But wait, there's more. You want to clean your windows? <laughs> it's like... I don't watch channels that are always trying to sell me bullshit. I'm like, dude, just show me what you working with. Screen record the shit you got. Right? Let me see what you doing in your region. Let me apply some of that to my region, some of the logic. And that's why a lot of my videos, I say the logic. I always say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. Because if I don't tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, you won't know why. You won't comprehend it. You'll try to memorize it. Memorization is not, is not good. No, you need comprehension. Memorization is your lack of knowledge, but it's your ability to retain information and spit that shit back out. Comprehension, you just know shit. That's what it is. Comprehension, you just know shit. You just know. What's your name, Jeff? How do you know? Motherfucker, because I know. But if you tell me this person's name over here, hey, that's Teresa. Two days later, you remember her name? Uh, Teresa. Yeah, see, memorization. I memorized it. I don't know her motherfucking ass. <laughs> it's like, but if I know her and I can comprehend shit, her life... I, hey man, that's Teresa, man. She cool as a motherfucker, man. You know what it is? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. You gotta learn how to comprehend. So when I'm driving, I'm giving you knowledge. I'm telling you why I'm doing what I'm doing, how things may end up, how I want things to end up. Cause a lot of my shit, I forecast. I say, okay, when I pick this person up, I'm gonna try to get this ride to drop me off down there. If this ride can drop me off down there, I know they'll be surging in about 15, 20 minutes. They usually do. See if I can get down there, use this ride to get me down there, post up at a circle K, chill for a minute. And sure enough, like clockwork, I get down there and that shit don't fucking happen because they don't put surge down there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Usually when I do that shit, something that I think is going to happen is going to happen. It's like when I'm like, hey, it's going to be surge always south. As soon as I get south, surge bounces all the way to the east. Damn, go to the east, it's going to go all the way to the west. So I learn that shit and I tell people that before it even fucking happens. So I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay put. I'm not going east because if I go east, all that surge is going to bounce west. I'm going straight north and I'm going to sit at a circle K. Soon as you get there, you have surge two blocks away. And this is why I screen record and I show people, don't chase surge if you're not close to it. It's a waste of time, complete waste of time. If you think you can make it, you're a mile away, no stoplights, you're on the highway, straight road, go for it. You got stoplights involved, you ain't gonna make it. Just hang it up, hang it up. But that's why a lot of these channels, they don't know your city, know how you drive, no shit about you. Therefore, when somebody's telling you, they can guarantee you're going to make X amount of dollars a week if you watch your channel. Eh, I call bullshit on that. In the moment, you don't. Oh, well, that's because you didn't do what we told you to do. We told you to fucking stick your finger in the air, see which way the wind was fucking blowing, drive your car in the opposite fucking direction, turn the key back, turn the key forward, turn the key back, turn the key forward. Surge pops up. Yeah, I ain't never heard no shit like that. But these motherfuckers will say that's what happens. They'll say that's what happens. <laughs> it's like, whatever, dog. Whatever. <laughs> It's like, shit, turn the key back, turn the key forward. Surge pops up. Told you. <laughs> it's like, okay, dog, okay, cool, cool. But I'll tell you right now, use your fucking brain when you're driving. You know when you're taking bullshit, you can feel bullshit. 22 miles, $13. You're like, shit, this is going to be 28 minutes. I'm making $13 in 28 minutes. That's $26 an hour on my own fuel. I'm paying $4 a gallon. I'm using two gallons, so that's minus eight. 26 minus eight, I'm making $18 a fucking hour. Hmm, do I want to make 18 an hour? Do I want to push this shit towards 35? What do I want to do? I want to push it towards 35. So I'm going to hang out, get a $7 ride, two miles, that's 350. All right, so I done went two miles, I'm sitting here. Got the seven. Dude tips three. Now I'm sitting at 10. Okay. Now you, you got $10 and you only went like three, four miles total. And the other ride had you going like damn near fucking 20 something miles for damn near that same price. And you like, shit, man, I just got to fucking be smarter with this. 
I can't guarantee you to make anything. I can't because I don't know your market like that. But I guarantee the smarter you drive, the better off you're going to do. That's one thing I do know. Turn the key forward, turn the key back. <laughs> In the spirit of us talking about profits, I saw this article popping up. Actually, one of my uh, passengers, one of my private rides sent me this. Said, hey, Jeff, check this out. Driver made over 110 grand from Uber and Lyft, but only took on 14 G's in profit. That's it. And I'm telling you, if you drive a certain way, you've got to drive. Let's say he drove a dollar a mile. It's $110,000 and 110,000 miles. Now, he probably drove more than that over the year because he still got to do dead miles and stuff like that. So if you're driving at a dollar a mile, you're driving for way less than that, actually. On top of that, all the fuel, the oil, the tires, and he kind of just, excuse me, and he kind of discusses it as you go down. And he's saying he's pursuing his degree to just stop driving altogether. But, you know, he values the flexibility of gig driving and shit like that. That's cool. I get it. I get it. And he's a rideshare driver in his late 30s, a guy named Michael. Hopefully the professor goes over this and like reads it through for you. Honestly, and I say that shit with all sincerity because I know I'm not reading this to you. And you're probably driving in your car like, what the hell article is it? And you like, you want to hear somebody read it to you. I'm going to give you the outline of this shit and you can go to the professor's page. He's going to break it down and actually read it to you. His shit is more of a, a, a reading podcast to where if you're driving, you could turn him on. He's going to read the whole article for you. Back to the routine. So Michael, he's in New Jersey. <laughs> Michael's in New Jersey and shit like that. But so he shared all of his screenshots of tax documents, stuff like that. He had 17,000 rides over six years and has become increasingly less profitable. So, and he's he's enrolling in a bachelor's degree program that's funded entirely by Uber. But in the meantime, driving is one of his only options to pull in some cash. So he was saying how, you know, end of the year, we incur every single cost from wear and tear to mechanical, cell phones, oil changes, gas, which is our business expense. And now we're getting less pay, Michael said. So as you can see, what we're telling people to drive for the profits, drive for the profits. If you're not driving for the profits, this is the kind of boat you end up in. You're only taking home 14 grand to live on pretty much. Because like the guy saying, he's paying for a lot with this car. Now the 14 G's, eh, I wonder if he's paying rent and stuff like that along the way. Because from 110,000 all the way down to 14,000, that's almost $100,000 gone. And I don't think that's only car note, insurance, gas fuel. A hundred thousand, he must be paying rent, food, clothes, all that shit. And 14 grand is what his bank account went up over the end of the year. As I showed you in my videos, my bank account went up $3,800 from last year to this year, same time. I'm only $3,800 up. This guy's 14,000 up. So he must be doing something right. If that's really what he's saying. If he's not really saying that, I don't know. I'm not seeing his bank account. But yeah, he's talking about, you know, he started driving right here in 17 after being the delivery driver for Domino's. Delivering the motherfucking hot dogs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he was the driver for hot, for Domino's and he it just wasn't paying the bills. But he was receiving 60 to 70% of what the passenger paid doing Uber and Lyft back then. We don't get that now. We're getting 30% to 50%, sometimes 60, but only on the short rides. And he was saying how he was in extreme financial condition. He didn't have a green card. That right there. I didn't have a green card. I was limited to my choice of employment. My wife wasn't working. So he's an immigrant and he's over here using delivery and ride share as his income. Make $110,000 a year, which he probably can't make where he immigrated from. But then he's only sitting on 14 G's in profit. I'm thinking 14 G's is what his bank account went up. He's saying it's 14,000 in profit. I find it hard to believe that ride share costs $100,000 a year. I don't believe that. But like I said, maybe he's putting his house and shit and medical bills and stuff in there too. So he switched to full-time Uber and all that. He drove 50 to 60 hours, 40 to 50 hours a week, sometimes as many as 80 hours a week, which allowed him to make between 1,800 and 2,200 a week fully, fairly consistently. And now he's saying the most he can make is around, I, I saw it in there earlier because I read through this already. He had a car crash and shit like that. But I read now he said he could pull around 1000 to 1100 a week. There it is. So he said pre-pandemic, he would make between 1500 2000 a week before gas and taxes. Now he's pulling around 1000 to 15 to 1100 a week. This is what we're trying to tell all these channels out there telling y'all. Oh, ain't nothing wrong. It's just what's wrong with you is you just not driving during the right time of day. If you drive at a different time of day, you can make the same amount of money you always make. No, doubt it. Trust me. Highly doubt it. The apps are still in tips. 
still in fairs, fake surge. It's a lot going on right now, a lot going on. So you can't only say the only reason why people ain't making money is because we're not driving at the right times of the day. I doubt that shit in every market. That is not 100% of them. Some markets may be. All markets, definitely not. Let's just say that. Definitely not all markets. Because, I mean, that's why, you know, I wanted to check out this article. And he's, he added that the saturation of drivers in the market in northern New Jersey has made it more challenging to make enough money to provide for his family. He also noticed fewer promotions, which in the past meant frequent bonuses for completing a certain number of rides in his area over last year. So I kind of read that to you. That's cool. But I read through this article earlier. And, you know, he's saying he's got little, little on living. Screenshots of his buy and showed um, his bottom line or whatever, or his BI showed. It's 167 from a ride, which the passenger paid 350. So he got a, a little over 50% for that. Another ride, no, a little less than three, three, because that's about what, 334. 334 would be 50%. He got less than 50% of that. 167 out of 350. Another ride that cost the passenger 500 gave him 220. Still under 50%. 250 would be 50%. He got 220. Sometimes he's offered rides where he needs to drive 10 miles, 10 to 20 miles to pick up a customer only for them to travel a mile or two. Ride share is different now. I'm seeing people who's only been driving since October, October 2023. They've been driving and they think they mastered this shit already. I see them on my man Abdul page, uh, Demon Hellcat page. They over there. Yeah, I've been driving since October. We know what we doing. Y'all don't know what we doing. We've been, you know, you just got to get in your car and drive. You got to turn it on for 12 hours a day. This is what people are saying since they've been driving since October of 2023. They've been driving for two, three fucking months and think they mastered it. Here are people that have been driving six, seven, eight. We know this shit. We know how it used to be versus how it is now. We're not about to slave for these apps. All these people just starting to drive since October. Oh, all you got to do is just drive 12 hours a day every day. No, fuck that. We're not the same. Ain't happening. Doubt it. We should be able to make a decent living with a full-time job, not a double-time job where we using our car, beating up our shit. Like I said, this guy right here, he's got it. This is tax returns show Michael made 80500 in gross earnings from Uber, reduced to twenty six after expenses and commissions. So 20600 after commissions in 2020, he made thirty four six from Uber since he took a few months off, and, and though he lost 1000 on net. And for Lyft, he took home $600, but had gross earnings of over $3,300. It's fucking crazy. This shit's crazy. $600 is what they call his net income. $20,000 was his net income. It was reduced, like I said, $80,000 reduced to $20,600 after expenses and commissions. 20 Gs. That's less, less than $2,000 a month to pay all your bills and shit. This is crazy. He must be living on like Social Security or something involved in it. Like I said, he had an accident. He must be living off all the money. 20 G's to live off of for all the... Nah, nah, I don't think so. That's crazy shit right there. But even if he said he got 80,000 in gross earnings and uh, Uber is saying, well, we gave him 20,000 to him. That means they took out all of his commissions and everything and they're paying him less, less than 50% of what he earned on the road. Crazy shit. Y'all can go find this article. Hopefully, Professor goes over with y'all, too. He goes more in-depth than I go. I just kind of talk through shit. But it was a business uh, business insider article, and it came out. Uh, what Mario Tama took the picture here, but Noah Shedlower actually did it 22 hours ago. Hopefully, the Professor, most likely he will. He's pretty sharp, and he's on this shit. He finds articles, dives right into them, gets on them. I kind of throw shit on the back end, just kind of talk about it, create, you know, some conversation. We do conversation and debate around here. So if you out here having a hard time, you new to Uber, you just started driving in October, trust me, you don't know shit. You think you do, trust me, you don't. You might know your market, your region, what time fucking Starbucks open, what time hot dog on the stick closes. That's about all you know. When it comes to this industry, it has changed so much, it is fucking up the veterans. There's a lot to learn about this business, the ins and the outs, the quirks, the theft, all of this shit going on. You got a lot to learn. Stay humble. Kind of look around. All you, I just started driving in October. I know I'm doing better. Than, okay, motherfucker, maybe you a natural at it. But then again, maybe you're full of shit. Who knows? 